and Miss Mary Wilson. And Miss Florence Bowler. Florence Ballard was one third of the Motown supergroup the Supremes. The Supremes are one of the most iconic girl groups of all times. The members' names were Diana Ross, Mary Wilson, and of course Florence Ballard. They were formed in the 1960s and had their first hit in 1964 with their song Where Did Our Love Go? And the hits kept rolling in with songs like Baby Love, Come See About Me, Stop in the Name of Love, and You Can't Hurry Love. They became international superstars. To the outside looking in, these girls was the total package. Florence was the voice, Diana had that crossover appeal, and Mary was the looks. They were known for their glamorous, sophisticated sound and looks. But behind the scenes, it was a mess. The group started to notice the division between them and Diana. Couldn't understand exactly what was going on. We didn't do things together anymore. The only time we would see each other would be in the dressing room or on stage. And I was saying, God, what's happening? I'm just, in a way I felt scared, the way I felt unhappy. It's a whole bunch of mixed, mixed up feelings. And all the songs were being written for Diana to sing the lead. A songwriter by the name Holland Dozer Holland wrote a few hits for the Supremes. But word on these streets is Diana was also his lover and side chick. So of course she got the lead parts. But all that came to a screeching end when Holland's wife Sharon beat the brakes off Diana. Then fast forward to 1965, the founder of Motown Records, Barry Gordy made Diana the face of the group and changed the group name from the Supremes to Diana Ross and the Supremes. This caused tension in the group. Florence in particular resented being pushed to the back. Reality set in with the group name change is when the girls were set to headline a series of shows in Las Vegas at the Flamingo Hotel and Casino. When they made it to Vegas, the marquee read Diana Ross and the Supremes. When Florence saw this marquee, it caused her to relapse and start drinking again. And Diana Ross's next move cuts the band in two. Part of Diana's rise to diva status was to demand and receive a separate dressing room with Flo and Mary as the background singers being relegated to the secondary dressing room. There was this separation from the group, and everyone talked about it. And you realize that equality is no longer there. Flo Ballard was now just a bit player in the band she founded. They said Florence went and had a drink or two and cussed Barry and Diana out, which led to her being fired and replaced with Cindy Birdsong. Florence would step out on her own and release two solo songs for ABC Records that did not chart. So the label shelved her album, but in between all that, she met and married a man by the name of Thomas Chapman, and the two would have three daughters. Shortly after that, the relationship got rocky, then the couple separated. Things just kept on getting worse for Florence. With no money or job, she had to go on public assistance to support her girls. I just don't get how Diana could see her childhood friend doing not so well and not help. Diana was making millions, and let's not forget, the Supremes was originally Florence group. The Supremes wasn't just some girl group that Barry grabbed and threw together. These girls were childhood friends. They were homegrown from Detroit. But in my personal opinion, Diana was never a friend because once the fame came, she only looked out for herself, even if it meant sleeping her way to the top. In 1975, things started to look up for Florence. 
she won an insurance settlement, patched things up with her husband, and began performing again. But once again, grief struck Florence in February of 1976. She was admitted to the hospital and died just one day later from a blood clot to an artery. She was only 32 years old. According to Peter Ben Jameson's 2009 book, The Lost Supreme, Florence funeral was held at a Baptist church in Detroit and over 5,000 people attended. The streets and sidewalks was filled with mourners for the fallen star. Then Diana Ross pulled up in her limousine, making her grand entrance, wearing a fur with her bodyguards by her side. The fans started booing her. People say it's unknown if Diana was even invited. I highly doubt she was. Diana's mother attended as well. They both looked upset that she was being booed. What did they expect? A standing ovation? Mark Bagel, who attended Florence ceremony, said Diana came walking in with her two bodyguards by her side, let out a sobbing scream as she entered the church, swooning and appearing to be nearly faint. The bodyguards had to carry her because she was too distraught to walk to the front of the church. The mourners were shocked and clutching their invisible pearls. Mark said, I have never seen such a choreographed display of drama in my life. It appeared to be the most act of mock mourning that I have ever seen. He went on to say, Diana had purposely set out to overshadow Florence at her own funeral, making herself the center of attention, writing, she won't even allow Florence to be the star at her own funeral. Then she strutted her little skinny tail to the front of the church, sitting directly next to Florence's husband, Thomas. At one point, she took the youngest child, Lisa, from him, sat her on her lap so she can get a few pictures of herself appearing sad with the child. And sadly, this is the only picture available from the ceremony. People talked about Diana like a dog after that funeral. The fans and public could not believe Diana would use her friend and ex-group member ceremony as a publicity stunt. But what she could not take away from Florence was her unparalleled voice. Mary Wilson would later say Florence was just as great of a singer and was up there with Etta James and Aretha Franklin. Some people will call Florence the Forgotten Supreme, but she wasn't. She was the voice of that group. Hell, it was her group. It was just unfortunate it was taken away from her by Barry and Diana. He paid her a one-time payment of $139,000, which her attorney took half of that. Plus, Florence wasn't allowed to use the name The Supremes under no circumstance. They say money and fame will show you who a person really is. Anyways, jump in the comments and let me know how you feel about Diana Ross and The Supremes. Do you think the fans had the right to boo Diana or do y'all think they were being harsh? As always, thanks for watching my videos and remember to like, share, and subscribe for more content like this.